Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So I was talking to my friend last week about how he has trouble tracking how many hours uh, he's working a month and how much money he collected over the course of his part-time job. So imagine running a service, let's say you're a yoga instructor and you charge people by the hour and there's no fixed schedule. Someone might come, someone might leave and um, it's very hard to, to actually keep track of how many people that you taught for the last two months and how much money you collected, whether the money collected um, corresponds to the number of hours that you work for them. So this app was the product of that. So uh, this app mainly has four main parts. You have a part of your teaching history. So you can have uh, these two where you teach yoga and biology for two different clients. So name of client, I'll just name them 135 and the duration maybe is the number of hours. And you also should have a payment history of, you know, when you're being paid by when and what is it for. So you also need two places for enter, you know, who is your client and what subject do they do and remarks and so on. Um, you can, you should also have a place to you to input uh, the, the payment that they do. So everything that you need to do basically will lie in the app. So in order to start off this app, the first thing that we need to create is a, is a spreadsheet. So we can do it in Google Sheet, you can do it in Microsoft Word. I choose Google Sheet because I'm more familiar with it. So um, since we have four tabs just now, it doesn't have to be four tabs. So to create the four tabs that we have just now, we'll also need four different tabs here in our Google Sheet. So the first one will be the, the, the date of the service, the duration, the name of the client and the subject. So this tab will correspond to your teaching history over here. So the second tab will have the payment. So in this case, there'll be the date of the payment. When do they pay? Uh, what is the name of your client? The amount that they pay and the remark. Are they paying for 10 lesson? Are they paying, paying for yoga? Or are they paying for like a plumbing? Or if you're, you know, let's say you're an electrician or so on. So what do they pay for? Is it just the service or the hardware? And so on and so forth. Okay, so once you have this uh, two tabs, you also need a client name. So in this case, you can add just C1 to C9 and you just add on the client name uh, after this. So I merely created this rather than using just a string as a name, uh, considering you might have a reoccurring, reoccurring client. Let's say you are having a yoga class with this guy every week. You do not want to create a new name. So in the end, it's very hard to keep track of you know, how many um, times you have actually have session with this person. Okay, you also need a subject. So I listed down seven different examples over here. You can teach biology, maybe you teach Python programming online, maybe you do coffee art, maybe you do cleaning. Same, as long as you're charged by the hour, this app should work. Okay, so how do you create this app? So you go to my account. So once you go to app sheet, uh, you should see something like that on the main page. You go to my account, go to my app, and just create a new app and start with your own data and just name whatever data you want, whatever category you want, and choose your data. So once you choose your data from the Google Sheet, you'll be greeted with something similar to this, okay? So first thing you need to do is to go to the, the data tab over here, okay, you can see on the left, and go to add table, and make sure you add all four tables that we have created in the spreadsheet just now, okay? You should have a sheet one, in this case, that rename as add teach, which is what I name my app as. You can name it whatever you want. You have the subject, payment, client name. So each of them corresponds to each of the, the tab that I've created in the spreadsheet just now. So let's go to the easier one. So your name of your subject and the name of your client. So in the name of the subject, just make sure you go to the, the table, go to view columns. So we need to define the individual columns and make sure your key is on the key and your subject is on the label. So for those that are wondering what is a key, so a key is the unique identity for each of the subject. So in this case, why do we use a key instead of just naming as it is, is because uh, in case you need to say, I want to change yoga to a certain type of yoga, or let's say uh, biology. So in this case, I want to say biology, but I want to say biology advanced or biology extended. You can just change it without affecting everything in the back. So, so, so what does that mean is that in, in downstream, if you want to change the name of your subject, you can without affecting the overall structure and programming that you're going to do later. Okay, it's much easier and much cleaner. 
Okay, so similarly, just to make sure your key is on your key, your subject is on your label. The rest you can remain as it is. And you go to the second one, go to the easy one, go to your client name. Similarly, under column type, go and make sure that the key is under the name and the label. Sorry, the key is under the key and the label is under the name. If there's any additional column that's created by the system, that's fine, keep it as it is. No need to worry too much about them. Okay, once you're done, let's go to the payment. So the payment, just to make sure, so the payments are relatively straightforward. Make sure the key is on the date of the payment because the, the date of the payment is almost always unique. It's unlikely that you have the same, um, actually that, so it's unlikely the same person will be paying twice. So it's unlikely you're gonna receive money for the same person two days in a row. Okay, so it, it works fine. If that costs you any error, you can also change the key to a row number, which of course they will give you an error, but you know, you can kind of just ignore it because um, okay, why they give you a row number key error is that if you are having many people entering data at the same time, you cause a clash in the key. But if you're the only user of the app using row number, it's fine. Okay, I can just keep it as it is. And let's go to our final tab, which is our, our, our history tab. So the history of the work that you do. So uh, go for the first of all, the date of the entry, change it as a date time. When you want the entry, you want to make sure they are very, very unique, which is why it has to be a date time instead of a date. Otherwise, when you do, let's say you have one yoga session in the morning and one yoga session in the afternoon, uh, your key will clash and it will not work. But as long as it's on the date time, they are precise down to the minute of seconds. So as long as you don't enter two things in the same seconds, you'll be fine. Again, uh, if you are on a you are dabbling an app for a million people that will cause problem. If you are dabbling an app for yourself, usually it's fine. Okay, so the date of the service, usually I use it as a label. So it's easier to know that when I look at this data, the date of service will be the, the most important thing that I want to see. Okay, so the next one will be duration, where I change it to a number. So of course you can change it as a floating point if you want. I think it's called decimal here. Yeah, you can just share a decimal if you want, but I'd rather to keep it as number for a cleaner look. Uh, okay, so the difficult, the diffi the not difficult, the different one is here is to change the name of the client into a reference and your subject into a reference table. So once you've done it to the reference, can you see there's a little edit button here? Go to your edit button and change the source name to the whatever table that you imported. So in this case, name the client, change to client name, and click done. Okay, same thing with the subject, go to reference table, change the subject, and click done. So when you are choosing what you have later, you will actually take, so it is like a data validation when you are using Google Sheet, where you will only be able to choose from the selection you provide in the other table. So in this case, um, the, the name of the client has to be defined in the other table first before you are allowed to enter into the history. Okay, so now we have done our, our data, we need to deal with our logic and our interface. So in this case, the, the interface they're called user experience, short, and in short, they're called UX over here. So we also again have four tabs that we see from the example here, primary uh, payment history, teaching history, history input, and payment input. So let's go for the most easiest two first. So the input are usually easier. I like to start there. So let's go for the payment input. So payment input, uh, once you, uh, so you can create it if you don't have it in your view already. Let's go for new view and choose uh, payment. Okay, once you choose payment, you look something like that, which is very weird. We don't want a card, we want a form. So when you choose the form, it should be all done. So let's try. So name of the client, uh, my client one to nine which is actually the same as what we defined earlier in the, in, the, in the Google Sheets. So C1 to C9. So we can only choose between one to nine. Of course, if you wanna add someone else, just click new. And for the key, just make sure you enter a different key. Here, click 10. And this is my new customer. Okay, save it. And now you'll be able to select a new customer over here. So you can actually add a new customer within the app itself. You don't have to go for the go for the Google Sheets, okay? So if you are don't remember the number of key that you have here, you can just enter a random number 
and just make sure it doesn't clash. As long as it's unique, you're fine. Not the best practices, but it will work for now. Okay, and unlike, unlikely you're gonna have like 3,000 clients on your hand. Okay, so the amount of uh, payment that the customer pay you, maybe they pay you 500, and they pay you for like two months worth of lesson, let's say. Safe, and you're done with the payment history. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this new view because I already have one. So do the similar thing with your history input. Just go in, select form, and your history input should look like, yep, the, the app crashes, let's refresh it, see what happens. That happens sometimes. Okay, go to history input. Again, it failed, it doesn't work. Interesting. So yeah, let's troubleshoot. Let's go to history input. Um, for this data, we'll go to app teach. And we're gonna go for the form and it works. I have no idea why, and I don't know what happened. Okay, so uh, so every single column will be actually uh, structured into a question. In this case, your date of service is five. Okay, so you, you are doing it today. The duration is two. You can add or minus from the button here as well. Name of the client, let me say, only the name within the, the, the thing itself. So subject, again, it's one of this. If you want to add a new subject, just enter whatever uh, random key that you want. And if it has a, if you enter the same key, it will actually just give you an error. So just choose something else. Okay, so let's try this. It should, it should give me an error. Seven, it should give me an error. Save, it's ready to grow seven. So choose something else and choose a different subject. Let's say the new thing I want to teach, video making. Yep, so it will show as a new subject over here and you will never need to see the 78 key that you enter. Okay, so remarks, uh, new subjects. And I can save and that will practically be done. Okay, so let's check our payment history. So we have entered something just now where the person, the new customer has paid 500 for the last two months. So for payment history, you'll be able to see all the different lessons. How do you create this page? Again, very similar. Go to a new view. Uh, for this output like this, actually you will want it to be, where's my new view? Okay, here. So for a new view here. Okay, so in order to make it similar to what we have just now, just go for table and you're practically done. So of course you can also sort by, let's say I want to sort by my date of entry or date of service or I want to group by my name of my clients. So we will to group individually by the name of the client, or maybe I can group by, group by my subject that I'm te te teaching. So I'm doing two yogas, one video making and one biology, and so on and so forth. So you can also, let's say I want to sum of the duration of each group. I have teach four hours of biology, two hours of video making, four hours of yoga, so on and so forth. So mess, you can mess around with all this thing. And let's say if I want to put it on the rightmost, it should appear here. And you can again change the display for, let's say I want to display this as a uh, sample view and it should show up here. Whoops, what did I do? Okay, so I can also change the icon over here. Ooh, okay, this doesn't work. So let's just rename this up here. Where are you? View name. Yep, sample view and you can have something like this. Okay, there's also many other great way of actually displaying the data, which I actually strongly suggest you all to try it out. Just that almost everything that I do table seems to be the most obvious thing for me. That's why I use a lot, a lot of tables. So I'm also again gonna delete this because I already have. Okay, so once we're done, we're gonna go for the, the last thing, which is our payment history. Oops, something is very wrong with that shit today. Okay, so let's go over payment history where we have, so let's go payment history where we have payment and this is not our payment. <laughs> Try your name, let's go back to payment and we're done. Okay, so you can see the name of the client that paid 500 over here and another new customer that paid over here. So let's say you want to add a new payment history instead of going through the form, you can also use the plus button over here we can just choose another client, choose another amount, and then choose another uh, remark over here. So yeah, this should be a remark of a lessons. Save, and you should see another line over there. You can again add another line just in case, and save. So you have more and more lines like that. 
Okay, so similar with teaching history, you can also teach. You can also take one here, name of the client, subject, um, Arduino, and remarks, and they're paid or not. So let's say this guy I'm not paid. Save. Okay, then you have. Okay, so if you want to know who have paid, who have not paid, similarly go to teaching history, and you can get a group by um, lessons. Okay, something like that. Oh, sorry, not payment history. This should be teaching history. Teaching history, go to a group by and add a paid. Okay, so you can see that uh, the blank. So this one, you might want to inspect yourself and check. Yep, this one not paid. Save. And then when you go to teaching history, you can get all the stuff that has been paid. Uh, sorry, have been paid down there. All the stuff that are not paid out there. Okay, so that's practically it, I think. It's, it's a good way to visualize how much have you worked. You can again sort it here. So you can sort it by the date, you can sort it by duration, manually after you create the app. You can also see from the payment history, you can sort it based on the date, based on the lesson, based on the amount, and where is my client name? No worries, let's go back to add our client name backend. Okay, so sort by, group by, group aggregate, and where is my column order? Yeah. So add column order, date of payment, name of client, amount, and lessons okay then you remove the group aggregate and you will see your name of client over here so there's a lot of ways you can mess around the view but basically they just reorder the column and change group aggregate and so on okay you also have your history input where it has a very rigid structure so you cannot enter wrongly similarly with a payment input where it also have a very rigid structure that you cannot enter wrongly basically Okay, so once you're done, I would suggest to go to usually dashboard, edit the logo, edit the name, edit the description, and you can actually change logo by just pasting the, the image link over there. So like something like, uh, like that, where you can copy image addresses and paste the image addresses here directly, and you will appear as a logo directly, quite easily. Okay, and you can go, let's say you want to change to a light version, if you are some kind of monster, the dark version, you can also change the color and all the other other kind of what they call um, branding deal or, or, or view you want basically. Okay, so there's also many other things like behavior automation, security, and intelligence, which I'm not gonna go in, into today, but I, I will say information spec will be a good overview of what your app do and practically. That's it. So it's a very simple app you can create within the time frame of this 20 minutes video. And I hope you learned something today and enjoy your part-time job as much as you can. Goodbye.